Mm-hmm. Today we're going to do our homemade bread. And yes, we already have homemade bread recipes on the channel, but this particular video is going to be focused on the kneading dough aspect of bread making. And shout out to Fitz on Twitter. He keeps saying that he want to try bread, he just want to do bread. But the kneading dough is what has really be giving him the most problems. And I know for a lot of people who want to do bread as well, the kneading dough is the most intimidating part of bread making for a lot of people. So today, I'm going to show you how to knead dough, how to get a nice smooth dough, and try to get, we're not aiming for perfection, we're just aiming for a real good bread. So, let me jump right into it. All right, so the recipe that I'm doing today is a milk bread recipe. So using milk, but of course you could use water instead if you don't want to use milk. Uh, this is cow's milk that I got from Mr. Bolai um, from his farm. So there's a real rich, high fat content milk, full cream as you would say. And the first thing I'm going to do, because this came straight out of the fridge, is I'm going to pop this in the microwave for a minute to get it at the right temperature. Because, I mean, as you would know, in bread making, having your liquid and, you know, your fat and that kind of thing at the right temperature is what could, you know, mean the difference between your bread rising and your bread falling flat. So, I'm going to put this in the microwave for one minute and bring it to the right temperature, which should be tepid, which is, you put your finger in it and it's warm to the touch, not too hot and not too cold. A little above room temperature. The kind of temperature that I guess you would bathe in, in terms of like your water temperature, that's the temperature that we're going for. So, the uh, word for that is tepid, but, um, you know, in layman terms, warm water or warm milk. So into the microwave for one minute. All right, so that is the milk finished in the microwave. So let's go get that. All right, so the milk is out of the microwave and it is at the right temperature that I need it, which is warm. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside here in the meantime, and let's get the dry ingredients going. So for this recipe, we need four cups of all-purpose flour and a good thing to note is to kind of level off the top of your measuring cup when you're measuring for your flour because uh, you know obviously if it had a mound then that is more than a cup so you want to kind of just make sure that it's leveled off so that you're getting as close to precise measurements as possible and for this recipe i'm using regular all-purpose flour I'm not using any special you know bread flour or anything like that it's regular all-purpose. Next up for the dry ingredients, we want a teaspoon of salt. It is important to put salt in your bread if you want it to have some flavor. So, teaspoon of salt. And then we want one and a half teaspoons of yeast. So I have some yeast here. One and a half teaspoons of yeast. And then you want three teaspoons of white sugar. Okay, so the dry ingredients, you know, all combined, fully combined, that is the yeast, the salt, the sugar, and the flour. And a couple things to note when you're doing dough. You really want the dough to have a nice, tight, smooth surface. And to do that or to achieve that, you really need like a smooth countertop to really get your dough nice and smooth. At least I find so, right? Um, this is a smooth countertop that I have here. But if your countertop not that smooth, you could get one of these. Um, I don't know what it's called this, but it made specifically for like kneading dough and that kind of thing. You could get these. Um, circular dough kneading surfaces, I guess, at certain stores that have like sell like kitchen stuff. Yeah, they can get these um, surfaces, and it's real good for dealing with dough for kneading dough and that kind of thing. Good for making roti and what have you. So, if you don't have a smooth surface, smooth countertop to work with, 
I would suggest getting one of these. Right. I'm not gonna do a lot of editing in this video. What I'm really trying to do is remove any kind of mystification that might be happening when you think that I'll edit the video and the kneading process might be more complicated than I making it out to be. Now, I really want to show you that ball by ball, step by step, it's real easy to get your dough to come together. You just need to follow these steps and don't be afraid of the dough. We're going in with our liquid. And I'm mixing it a little bit by a little bit. You want to keep your fingers kind of loose like this and just kind of stir it. Add in some more. Again, keep any fingers kind of loose. You really want to get in there. And as you could see, the dough already starting to come together. Now add in the rest of our liquid. Now, as I tell you, don't be afraid of, you know, the dough and getting your hands dirty and that kind of thing. If you reach at this point in the recipe or in the bread making process and you realize that the dough is a little too wet, don't panic, don't be afraid, don't get flustered. All you need to do is grab a flour. Just add in a little more flour to bring the dough to the consistency that you need it, which is a little less sticky than it is here. Now, what might cause the um, dough to be a little sticky if the measurements are precise is sometimes the hydration level of the flour um, could be affected by the temperature of the room and that kind of thing. So. I mean, as you know, baking is a science, so not to get too technical, but it have different factors that could impact um, how your dough come out, even if you follow the recipe to a T. But as I say, don't fear, don't panic. If you do a little wet, you add a little more dry ingredients. If you do a little dry, you add a little more wet ingredients. I mean, those are kind of thing where it's kind of you could go by feeling as well, so you would know when a dough too sticky. You understand? Like if you're feeling it very sticky, sticking to your hands, you know that's that little sticky. Don't be afraid to add a little more flour. All right? You see how we look in here? Do coming together, and what you could do as well, which I like to do is to start the dough in the bowl before I put it onto the surface. And that way it will have, I guess, less mess and less cleaning up to do afterwards. All right. So the dough feeling good here to me. Feeling like it at the right consistency. So now I want to transfer it onto the surface. So of course you want to add some flour to your surface. You want to turn the dough out onto the surface. Use your hand and scrape all the pieces of dough from the bowl back onto your dough. I mean, it makes no sense 
leaving a dirty bowl full of dough stick up on it. Just use your hand, get all these stray pieces back onto your dough. All right, let's move this aside. All right, so let's start working the dough. Now, as you can see, yes, my hand's sticky. The dough stick into my hands, and that is quite okay. Add in our pearl extra flour side here. And let me start working this dough together. All right. And it was, as you will see, all you need to do is keep working the dough, and it will start to come together into a ball. All right. Cleaning off my fingers here. And I think this is the part where people just get like intimidated when they see, you know, dough sticking up on the hand and that kind of thing. They think, oh my God, you know, I can't deal with this. It's too much mess. No, no, no. This is all part of the bread making process. And I mean, for me, I know some people will just use a bread maker, a bread machine and or the stand mixer to do this, but for me, this is the fun part of making bread, kneading the dough. So I would not use a machine to do this. I enjoy doing it by hand. And as you can see, the kneading action is a simple pulling and pushing process. Simple pull and push. You pull in with your fingers and then push in with the base of your hand, right? And that is it. Simple. Again, you know, clean your surface, get all the extra pieces of dough into the ball of dough and not, you know, on the counter. It makes no sense, you know, having that wastage. So I like to, you know, rub all these pieces off from my hand and incorporate it back into the dough. Right. And as I say, I'm going to try to do as little editing here as possible because I really wanted to appreciate the full process. It's not no TV magic, as I say, not no editing to make it look good. I'm giving you the full experience here. All right. As you can see, we come in together real nice. Now, notice how it's still a little sticky, and that is fine. All you have to do is sprinkle the flour and keep going. And they want to do this kneading part, as I say, for about eight minutes. That's going to develop the gluten in the flour. And there's the part for me that, as I say, is my favorite part because it is really, you know, force it to kind of slow down and just, you know, focus solely on the dough and nothing else. You know, you can kind of clear your head now. So that's why I guess I just enjoy this part of bread making. Like I don't eat a lot of bread, but if I could do this, Maybe not every day, but like every other day, this will be good. I think I could work in a bakery and, you know, my job could just be kneading flour. I could do that. Scan the extra flour off my hand. Then that go back into the dough. And as you could see, the dough is coming together. At 
this point, I'm going to set my timer for All right, so I set the timer for seven minutes because we have been uh, needing for a little bit. So I think seven minutes from now, we should be good. And as I say, if you find the dough a little sticky, just sprinkle a little bit of flour, not too much, and continue working it. And it's a simple pull and push technique that will develop the gluten. Another technique I like to use as well sometimes is using my knuckles and pushing with my knuckles. But you don't need to do that could easily just keep using basically your palm and your fingers to continue kneading this Take a look at this. We are already well on our way to having a real nice, perfectly kneaded dough, which for all intents and purposes should result in a very nice, soft bread. See, it's not stiff. Hard and not tough is a nice, soft, supple dough with a nice, tight skin already. And as I say, part of achieving that tight skin is having a nice, smooth surface to work on. Once again is you know pushing and pulling pushing and pulling and I learned to 
knead dough by watching my mother do it. Just watching her action of, you know, pu pushing with the base, pulling with your fingers. And the first time I actually need dough was back in the 90s. We used to have a pizza business owned by me. And it's my partner, Makesi who was the one that actually showed me how to knead though. It's almost like massaging, you know. So if you think about it like that, you know, like, Think about it do as like a massage and somebody, then you know that should help you with your approach of you know how you need to handle the do. Right, so that is our eight minutes of kneading this dough. Just gonna bring it together. Make the skin nice and tight. I like to do this little action of this kind of passing it back and forth. Oh, let me stop this timer. Right. So yeah, I like to do this little action. Just kind of moving it from side to side between my palms like this. So it's kind of cup it, moving it. Move it around like this. Yeah, here we have our nice smooth dough. Yeah, so all we have to do now is leave this to rest for about uh, 45 minutes or so to an hour. Just flowering the surface. I'm gonna cover this. With the bowl, and I'm gonna leave this to rise, double in size, and then we'll come back to it. And so, as you can see, the dough has doubled in size. And before we reach to working with it, I'm just gonna punch it down, punch the air out of it. I'm just gonna move this aside. And let's prepare the bread pan for baking one time. Let's have a little butter. Just gonna put a little butter in here. The pan well greased. And yes, even though it is a non-stick pan, you don't wanna take any chances. So, a little butter, make sure it's well greased. And now, I wanna prepare the dough for the bread pan. So what you wanna do is use a rolling pin, as I have here and roll the dough out flat into about a, I would say, half inch thickness. So 
So what we're gonna do now is roll the bread or the dough. I'm gonna roll the dough up like this, nice and tight. So we're gonna kind of make sure that the seam, pushing the seam in and rolling it. And keep the sides pushed in with every roll. and tight. So spread this out. Nice. Now I just want to place this seam side down into the bread pan. Just kind of even out the edges like that. So all right, so the only thing left to do now is want to cover this with a little cling. And I'll leave this to proof for about 20 minutes. So this is second proving. So I'm going to cover it so it don't dry out. All right, so we're going to leave this to proof again for 20 minutes and in the meantime we're going to preheat the oven at 350 degrees. All right so 20 minutes has passed, the bread has risen again, the second proof. So now we're going to put this in the oven for 25 minutes, between 25 to 30 minutes at 350 degrees and yeah we will see where it come out like but we're looking good. Slightly lopsided on this side as you could see but we ain't gonna make that a problem. Into the oven we go in, 25 to 30 minutes, 350 degrees. You will see what we're working with. All right, so that's the 25 minutes up there. So we'll go and check on the bread, see what we're looking like. All right, so there's what we're looking like. Not the most perfect bread, but I think we're looking good. Next step now is to apply some butter to it on the outside. Give it a nice sheen, but it's also for a nice buttery crust. It's just like the final touches to the bread. And as tempted as you might be to cut into this bread, right now because i mean it's smelling real good you definitely cannot cut into the bread right now you need to give this uh between like a 20 minutes to half hour to cool down so resist the urge to cut into this bread as soon as it comes out of the oven turn the bread onto the rack and you see, because we buttered the pan thoroughly, it didn't stick or anything. So yeah, this is our bread. I'm going to leave it to cool for about 30 minutes. And then I'll come back and slice it and you'll get to see how the bread really looks on the inside. I mean, this is what the outside looking like. Not the most perfect bread. I'm going to show you the next side. So as you can see, it kind of burst here by the seam. My bread will always come out perfect, but you know, once you follow these steps, you will get something really good, like really good results. So we're gonna let it cool, and then I'll come back and we'll do the cutting. All right, so the bread has cooled. It's about 25 to 30 minutes. So now we could cut it. Don't cut it before, you know, it cool, because if you do that, the bread will release all the steam, and parts of it might look like it's in cook properly, and all that kind of thing. You had to let the bread rest do its thing and then you could cut into it. So yeah, let me, let me go in for the cut. This is the moment of truth here. And here now, all here now. A little cross action here now, and then watch that. Talk to me. Talk to me now, man. Talk to me, talk to me. 
You see what's going on? You see the reason why we roll the bread and tuck and roll is to get that little swirl. You see that little swirl in action that's happening there? That is from rolling the dough onto itself. And watch what's happening here. Boom. Soft. Mm -hmm. That is bread. Talk to me. Nice crust on the outside. We have our golden color going on because of the butter that we added. And mm -hmm. pillowy, soft. Mm -hmm. We not get. Yeah, man. Nice bread. I will pay money for this bread. But you don't have to pay money for it. You have the ingredients in your pantry. You have milk in your fridge. Try this bread. And do not be afraid of the kneading process. I went through step by step how to knead the bread. So, if you want, rewind the video. Take a close look at my hand actions. The pulling and the pushing. Pulling with your fingers. Pushing with the base of your wrist. And here, do that for eight minutes. Develop your gluten. Let the bread, bread rise. I proof. And yeah, it really ain't no rocket science here to know. It's a simple thing. Follow them steps or these steps, and you'll be on your way to some good homemade bread. If you like this recipe, please give the video a thumbs up. Give it a share. And if you do try it, please post your photos to Instagram, Twitter, whatnot, and tag us in them. As always, the full recipe will be found on the website and the link to the full recipe is in the video description. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Mm-hmm.